All right, we're going to be doing dimensional analysis, this time working with SI prefixes. And that's like kilo, centi, milli. And you should have a pretty good idea of what that is. If you have a centimeter, that means one one hundredth of a meter. If you have a kil uh, kilometer, that's you know 1,000 meters. And uh, an important thing to think about whenever you're doing something with these SI prefixes is that what equals what? So you see this table here and you have kilo and the value is 10 to the third. So in, in your problem, let's say you, have, you want to know how many meters are in a kilometer. Well, it tells you right there. And it's really easy to mix the two around and say, okay, yeah, uh, 10 to the third kilometers in one meter. Now that's, that's wrong. So an easy way to think about anytime you have a value like this is that it always goes with the base of whatever you're working with. So for instance, you could have, you know, kilometers and the base would be meters. You could have, you know, kilograms and the base would be grams. Well, so whenever you write your uh, your ratio here, so you have 10 to the third of something, whatever that is, grams equals, and look over here, okay, so that's one kilogram. Likewise, if you have, for millimeters, let's say we're, we're working with meters, so our base unit, meters, would be the one that's modified here, 10 to the negative third meters in one millimeter. And that, you know, that kind of speaks to logic because we could all, you all know, like if you have a meter stick, you know that the millimeter marks are really, really tiny. And so there should be a lot more millimeters in one, in one meter. So it's really important to keep this, keep this in mind as you're doing dimensional analysis. Okay, now before we begin and do an actual example uh, converting uh, it, with units uh, in SI, uh, I want to go into the different keys on the calculator. Now on the, the TI-89, you have a caret key right here, looks like a little hat, and then over here you have the double E key. Now, the double E key is for when you want to write something in scientific notation. So let's say you have 5.012 times 10 to the third. Well, if you wanted to write that, in, uh, put that onto your calculator, you'd use the double E key because that's for scientific notation. And you would just type in 5.012 and then the double E key and then simply three. You can think of this double E key as kind of standing for times 10 to the. And the next thing that you write, the next thing you type into the calculator will be this exponent. So for instance, if you wanted to write, if you wanted to plug this into your calculator, negative four, okay? So 5.012 times 10 to the negative four you would type in 5.012, then the double E key, then the negative button, and then four. And make sure you know the difference between the negative button and the minus button, because they're not the same. So for instance, on the TI-89, you have the minus button right here. I'm sorry, <laughs> the negative button right here, and the minus button right here. If you, if you plug in minus right here, your calculator is not going to know what you, what you want to do. So make sure you know the difference between the minus and the other. So, but if you're working, so that's the, e, the double E key. Now with the caret key, that comes in handy for stuff like this. So for instance, let's say we wanted to write 10 to the negative 12 in our calculator. 10, negative 12. Well then we would write, we would type in one zero and then the caret key and then the negative one, two. And the calculator will read that as this. So sometimes you'll even see in if somebody's typing something out it, that has exponents, but you know, 
for whatever reason they like they don't have Microsoft Word or whatever, and you uh, you can't get that. You'll just you can't get something actually up in the exponent. You'll just see that and then negative 12, and it means the same thing. So, kind of rambled there, but it's really important to keep those two things in mind because if you get them confused, especially like on a test, then it's gonna screw up all, you know, all of the work that you've done. So, okay, let's go ahead and do a problem. Let's say I have 2.53 kilometers, and I wanna know how many picometers is that? Uh, how, many, how, many, how many picometers? There we go. So the question is convert 2.53 kilometers into picometers. So whenever we're doing dimensional analysis, we start with what we know and we write that over here on the left. So we know this, this is given 2.53 Always make sure you include your units because as these get more complicated, it's going to get, uh, you want to make sure you have your units labeled. And we, on the right side, we write down what we want, where we want to go, and that's picometers. Okay, so with dimensional analysis, right, we're going to multiply by a ratio of something, some conversion ratio, and we want to get rid of kilometers because we want to go to picometers. So without even thinking about it, I'm going to write that here. And now the kilometers goes away. Now there is a way to go directly from kilometers to picometers, but I find that that's confusing. And it's very, it's not so much confusing as it's easy to screw up. It's when, it, when you're doing calculations, especially on tests or something like that, I find it's much easier to go from kilometers to the base unit meters. So if we were in kilograms, we would go from kilograms, then put that down on the bottom, and then we'd go directly to grams, that base unit. And it's much easier to work with, especially with this method of plugging things into the calculator. So I went there, and now we're in meters, and we want to go to picometers. Well, we could do that easily. We'll just take meters, put it on the bottom, because we want to get rid of it. And now we'll put picometers up here. And now remember that it's not 10 to the negative 12 picometers in one meter. It's this always modifies the base unit. So I'm going to look, I have pico there. So in one picometer, it's actually 10 to the negative 12 meters and one picometer. And then with kilometers and meter, look up here, say, okay, kilo, that's 10 to the third, and that modifies the base unit, 10 to the third, and every one kilometer. And I'm just gonna take a second and go, wait, does that make sense? Are there 1,000 meters and one kilometer? Yes. Is one meter, or is there a lot of picometers and one meter? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so now I'm just gonna plug that right into the calculator the same way we did in the previous video. Only this time I'm gonna be using the caret key. So I start, let's see here. Okay, I start with the beginning, which is 2.53 multiply by 10 caret three divide by one, multiply by one, divide by 10 caret negative one, two. I hit enter and I get 5.23 E15. And when you see that E in your calculator, I think I said 5.23 is 2.53 times 10 to the 15th. And let's just check here. So our final unit is, those all cancel. Our final unit is picometers, which is what we wanted. And there's our answer. So we're gonna do a more complicated uh, example of dimensional analysis next.